Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. from the book of Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. That I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together Canticle 16 and stand on the insert in your bulletin. Blessed be the Lord, the God of our Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of the servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised to all. 
Reading from the letter to Paul to the Colossians. May you be strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the beloved Son in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things that have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him are all things held together. He is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have the first place in everything. For in him all fulfillment of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand and let us sing here on six seven.
know what they are doing. And the cat plots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders stopped the king, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals, who was hanged, hanged there, kept writing him and saying, Are you not Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we, indeed, have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Friends, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. First off, my apologies to everyone. Um, I am enduring the once every five years bronchial cold that I get, so um, I'm sorry that I couldn't complete the opening call for everybody, but um, y'all, y'all have it in front of you. You know what it said. <laughs> We've reached the end of this church calendar year with Luke, the day that is commonly referred to as Christ the King Sunday. The church started using that title for the last Sunday after Pentecost since the early 20th century. All the hymns celebrate Jesus as the king, crowning him with many crowns, letting angels prostrate fall before him. And yet, here in our gospel reading from Luke, we don't see Jesus, the triumphant. Instead, we're invited into this scene of his public execution. He's mocked and scorned. There is a nameless they who cast lots for his clothing as if they are some kind of party favors. Leaders, most likely of the emperor's clan, taunt him. Roman soldiers get in on the act, hurling snide commentary about him being the king of the Jews. Luke tells us the people stood by watching. The people were likely fellow Jews, powerless in the face of this cruelty to do anything, terrified by the spectacle. That was the point, to frighten any rebellious Jews from taking on the Roman Empire. They might have been angry and feeling let down. After all, they had pinned their hopes on Jesus as the one to lead them. And here he is, hanging between two criminals, condemned to die. Some king, huh? For the Roman Empire, this is a brilliant strategy. It's the one all authoritarians and bullies, both then and now, like to employ. They've reduced Jesus and his ministry to a joke. Encouraging an ethic of love. Loving the stranger as your neighbor. 
forgiving the wayward one who comes home and says, I'm a screw-up and not worthy, healing people struggling with all kinds of demons. That's not how a powerful person lives their life. By earthly standards, such a caring and compassionate person shows weakness and vulnerability. But then isn't it interesting that even though there are three people being crucified, only Jesus draws out the ire of the powerful. There's something about Jesus that makes them so bitter that they make a spectacle of his death. Something about him has a strange pull on them. He seems to be such a threat to their comfort at the top that they feel that they must not only inflict punishment and shame on him, they must kill him in order to remain strong. Perhaps, deep inside their hearts, they are also afraid. Maybe they sense that he is stronger than them, and his strength might expose their own weaknesses. That's the paradox of being a bully, isn't it? It's because they are weak that bullies and tyrants of the world act out in destructive ways to mask their own vulnerability. Their shadow selves hide behind a mask of brutality because they know they aren't really that powerful at all. They search out those who are weak so they can attack them. That makes them feel stronger. It's a strange providential coincidence that this Christ the King Sunday corresponds with the International Transgender Day of Remembrance, a time when we pause to pay homage to the lives lost due to violent hatred of those who are othered. Recently, we have seen in a state just to the south of us that those in places of power and privilege have used their positions to heap hardship on trans children and their families. The Florida Medical Board has adopted a rule banning doctors from providing necessary hormone therapy and care for children who are experiencing gender dysphoria. Politicians in this last election cycle felt no shame in running campaign ads which demonized trans youth and played upon fears of trans people. And just last night in Colorado, another mass shooting at a gay nightclub has killed five and injured 18 other people. It is sad. Such cynical and blatant othering runs counter to Jesus' stated mission to bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, release to the captives, and freedom to the oppressed. As we reflect on this scene of Jesus' crucifixion, it's interesting to see that the one person who recognizes Jesus is not a leader, not a soldier. It's one of the criminals, another one who is other in society. This man, who is broken and among the lowly, is the one person who can see the divinity of Christ shining through that bruised and battered skin. He senses Jesus' power, even though they both are hanging and dying at the hands of earthly powers. Perhaps this is why so many who have ever felt othered by the world when they meet the risen Christ in their lives find him to be a true king, a real leader, a kindred spirit. The man earnestly begs Jesus, remember me, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. This is the king who can maintain compassion in the face of violent opposition. A king who can resist anger and keep loving and forgiving all the way to the end. 
a king being unjustly crucified by a corrupt system, and yet can still maintain dignity enough to promise paradise to the repentant criminal. If social media had existed in the first century, Jesus would have been vilified by all those hiding behind their avatars. Because he's the type of king whose power of love and righteous justice intimidates and topples the bullies who feed on fear and hatred. We proclaim Christ as king because in his dying and then his rising again, Jesus makes a pledge to the one on the lowest rung of society. To that one, he will restore and liberate him from his worst self and deliver him from his separation from God. If Jesus can say this to a criminal, how much more so do his words apply to us? How much more is he bringing us into his mission to face the injustices of our time, which keep people in poverty, keep them captive to their fears and addictions, and press down upon those who yearn to breathe free? This promise of being remembered into God's kingdom is renewed each time we come to this Eucharistic table and receive the body and blood of Christ. We are being renewed and reinvigorated with a life force grounded in love to resist the powers of this world that want to break us. When we take in Christ, we are being given that strength to meet the needs of our community in the mission of God to love those who are lost and alone and to give comfort to those who are afraid. It's through us and our resilience to live into that love that we bring Christ into the world. And it's in this way, working through us, Christ reigns as the true King on earth as he is in heaven. In the name of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Standing now as we are able, I'm turning to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us recite the words of the Nicene Creed. <laughs> we believe in one God, God, the Father, the Almighty, the Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers for people are found on the insert in your bulletin. Let us offer our prayers and thanksgivings to God. We pray, we pray for, for the universal the church, for all ministers, lay and ordained. Let God's will grow and nurture within us, forming us into vessels of your love. Where there are cracks, mend them. Where the church is divided, reunited. Remember, God's grace is always with us, no matter the forces that press against us. And you, Lord, Lord, help us, us to do you. your will. We pray for the nations of the world. May the leaders be guided to seek justice and rescue the oppressed, do good, and share resources with equity. May God's love touch the hearts and minds of those entrusted with the power to serve the people. May, May all authority listen and discern your will. We pray for the welfare of the world. Lead us to be stewards of the earth, both land and seas. Guide us to be peacemakers and bring an end to to wars, civil strife, and violence, so that we may enjoy the fruits of creation. Give, Give us the will to preserve our natural resources and bring harmony to the earth. We pray for our local community. Help us to see the needs of our neighbors, known and unknown. Open our eyes to pain and injustice, especially to those who are hungry and without housing. To those in prison and those who struggle with addiction, lead us to remember that in serving our neighbors, we may have entertained angels without knowing it. Give, Give us the will and the strength to remain engaged and to, and to remember, remember that through God, God, we provide sustenance and living water to those in need. We pray for all those who are suffering, in need, or in any kind of trouble especially Megan, Sandy, the Meany and Walker family, Halim, Linda, Marge, Sally, Lynn, Carla, Nick, Sarah, Marianne, George, the Tucker family, James, Zachary, Renee, Hope, Stan, Tom, Jeff, Michael, Genevieve, the Potts family, Trinity, Zan, Richard, Lucy, Pat, and Ruth. Deliver them from pain, illness, and distress that they may know God's presence and grant them peace of mind and in our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for our congregation in Waycross, Grace Church. We also pray for our ecumenical partners in Waycross, especially St. John's Catholic Church. In our companion diocese of the Dominican Republic, we pray for the congregations in Santo Domingo, especially St. Anne's. Lord, hear the king cry as your people, strengthen their will, and meet them with your love. We pray for all who have died, especially Arnold Morris, and for all who loved and cared for them in this earthly realm. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. We receive them into your heavenly kingdom, that your will for them may be fulfilled. You may add your prayers and thanksgivings, either aloud or silent. My cousin Donald and my cousin um, Betty May. Major prayers for the people of Colorado Springs, Colorado.
Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we will not repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may die to your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. With each other in peace. Marilyn brought up, which was mentor. 
And what mentor means is that you're going to be somebody who, if you notice that there's somebody new in the, in the sanctuary on Sunday, make a point of going and sitting by them and helping them to understand what we're doing in the service. Because oftentimes people come here, they have no clue about the Episcopal Church. And they're kind of like, okay, she said, you know, turning to page 358, which, you know, and then they'll pick up the hymnal and go look at the hymnal. So, you know, the other one, the red book. So, um, it's, just a, it's just a nice way to kind of help acclimate people who are new to the church. So, um, please consider turning this in. It's due next Sunday. Of course, if you don't turn it in next Sunday, we'll report the following Sunday. So, um, these things. What are these? Anybody, anybody? Thank offering boxes. Yes! Yes! They are not thank offering boxes. What do you do with them? You put money in it for thankfulness. Yes! Yes! James, so we're going to collect these um, next Sunday as well. What this goes toward is grant programs in the church. So um, it's our way of helping to support the wider church in the mission of making grants available to programs that are happening. This next one is going to be for prison ministry. So make sure you have a box and fill it up with change and pray it next Sunday. Um, Kathy, you wanted to talk to people about the schedule. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on the schedule of ministries for December, this, the Sunday ministries that we do here during worship. Um, I'm going to, I'm asking for about people to sign um, volunteer for the December 24th Eve afternoon, late afternoon uh, service, Christmas Eve, and also the 25th because I'm not sure, I don't want to sign somebody to something that maybe they're not going to be attending. So I got the blanks here for the 24th and the 25th. The 25th is on a Sunday. And so I think that's like a regular Sunday service pretty much, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so if you want to run me down afterwards and put your name down, a uh, couple of you already told me you would do it. So just help us out here and then I'll try and put the rest of the Sundays by the end of And you can find me in the, or find the list in the Paris Hall after the service. Thanks. Um, one last announcement is that um, my final class on Inquiry 101 will be this Wednesday, 6 o'clock. What we're going to do is we're going to do basically an instructive Eucharist. So, um, so we'll have all this type of stuff set up, and you can go through the service to see what it is that we're doing and why we do it. If you're not in the class or haven't been coming to the class or just feel like showing up at 6 o'clock, come on down, because, you know, it's the type of thing where I'm happy to have people drop in, even if they haven't been part of the overall group. Anything else? Anything, anything? Okay. okay. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
Eucharistic service continues on page 361 with Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is a good, right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Call forward Kathy Hodges. Send forth Kathy Hodges to take the Eucharist this day to Lynn Crawford. May the prayers of this community go forth to those who await God's grace. Amen. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's blessing Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Amen. Our final hand is number 494.